D. Dictatorship in Europe, Second World War and World. Representative democratic system was adopted all over the world instead of royal reigns during the post-First World War period. In the first decade after the war, that is, from 1920 to 1930, there had been an atmosphere of enthusiasm everywhere. The major nations belonging to the League of Nations chalked out different programs for maintaining peace and harmony. However, this drama didn't last very long. There came into existence dictators in various nations. As the problems of those nations couldn't be solved, by democratic government. Among these were aggressive Hitler of Germany and Mussolini of Italy. Turkey had a reformative rule of Kemal Pasha and in Japan there was a military dictatorship. This unit is aimed at studying these dictators. Fascism of Benito Mussolini Benito Mussolini was a son of blacksmith. He took part in the First World War as a soldier. After the end of the First World War, he had been a teacher and a journalist for some time. Afterwards, Mussolini entered into politics by establishing the Fascist Party in 1919. In order to get people's support, he started giving assurances through different public programs. He ensured the masses that he would revive the reputation. Italy under the reign of Mussolini from 1922 to 1945. Acquiring the reins, Benito Mussolini integrated all power under his command. The king was only a titular head of the nation. The opposition political parties were banned. He saw that only members of the fascist party were elected to the National Legislative Council. The officers and leaders who opposed his policies were tied under false allegations and put behind the bars. With an aim of curtailing anti-fascist propaganda, the freedom of press was also weakened by different restrictions. The trade unions, too, were banned. There grew the strength of the fascist political party. Mussolini helped the common people to improve their financial condition by implementing various welfare programs. Industrial development was boosted. Educational system was used for spreading the ideology of fascism amongst the youngsters. Mussolini started self-glorification through the history of Italy. After seeking the public support, Mussolini started to expand the Italian Empire from 1923 onwards, he conquered the Aegean Islands from Turkey. By virtue of an empowered naval force, Mussolini captured Port Fium in 1924, taking the advantage of Great Depression. He invaded Ethiopia, a nation of African continent. The League of Nations too failed to control Italy. As a result, Italy became more and more aggressive. The aggressive policy of Mussolini endangered the peace and harmony of Europe. First, the fascism of Mussolini in Italy. Although Italy was one of the victorious nations of the First World War, it was disappointed by the Allied nations there spread a sense of frustration in Italy. The nation was getting bankrupt 
due to financial loss incurred during the war. After the war, many soldiers became jobless. There was an increase in prices and scarcity of food grain. The industries were also troubled by strikes and lockouts. Riots broke out everywhere. The middle class people were worried over the issues of security of life and property. The communist leaders in Italy began to feel that revolution like Russia could be brought about in their nation. Then democratic government in Italy was not able to solve the above-mentioned national problems. In between 1919 and 1922, there had been six coalition governments which came into power. The fascist forces took a pioneering role in getting Italy out of depression. In the year 1922, the fascist party captured the political power under the leadership of Benito Mussolini. Reasons for the rise of dictatorship The international situation became unstable and alarming right after the end of the First World War. The financial depression gave rise to dissatisfaction among the common people. There was growing tension among the defeated nations, which were imposed with insulting sanctions, and the conquerors too had been desirous of more power. The hope of getting security through the League of Nations was destroyed. The democratic governments in many nations started to collapse one after another. People lost their faith in democracy. The faith in solving problems through centralized military power began gaining ground and democracy lost its roots. Thus atmosphere were favorable for the rise of dictators. The Military Dictatorship in Japan Japan is a country of small islands. Dictatorship has been a dominant form of governance in Japan right from the ancient times to the middle of the 19th century. Commodore Perry of America visited Japan in 1853 and Japan came in contact with the Western nations. As a result, Japan underwent enormous industrial development. Consequently, the financial condition of Japan got improved. There began an exchange of ideologies with the Western world. Japan had its imperial rise as it brought reformations in the fields of education, politics customs and traditions. Out of a desire for imperial expansion, Japan raised the issue of Chinese domination of Korea. By defeating China in the battle during 1894 to 1895, Japan took control of Korea through Shimonoseki Treaty. In the beginning of the 20th century, Japan defeated Russia in the naval battle for controlling the Russian domination of the Far East. With the sole intention of defeating its imperial policy, Japan allied with the friendly nations in the First World War. Obviously, Japan got many of its demands satisfied at the negotiations of 1919. The Rise of Military Dictatorship Soldiers had a special position in the conventional society of Japan. It was believed in Japan that the bravery of the warriors decided the fate of a nation and sacrifice of life at the battlefield was a matter of pride. The emperor, the general, the political parties, the military, the administration and Zaibatsu had been the chief power centers in Japan. The experienced Hybro leaders of Genro were in full control of motivating a new constitutional experiment in the nation. The Genro, however, lost its ground 
after the First World War and the political parties and administration gained power. The balance of power in Japan began to shift towards the military after 1930. The unstable politics of the political parties and corruption wrecked by the henchmen of Zaibatsu caused a counter-reaction. It also made the people lose confidence in the parliamentary politics. As a result, the strength of military grew fast as the political parties and Zaibatsu lost their mass base. The armed forces of Japan were given a philosophical support for reformation, giving rise to an integrated and powerful source of power. This newly emerging power center gained the support of the administrators and politicians. The ten years between 1931 and 1941 were the heyday of the armed forces in Japan. Japan after the First World War Japan was considerably benefited by the peaceful treaty of Paris. The international status of Japan got increased and it became a great naval force in the East Pacific region. However, America couldn't tolerate the increasing domination of Japan. It started chalking out strategy for restricting the naval development and imperial expansion of Japan. In the year 1921, the American President Hardings convened the Washington meeting for bringing restrictions on the naval forces. As a result, there began a process of undermining the power of the Japanese Navy. All the advantages allowed to Japan after the First World War were withdrawn. This hurt Japan. Consequently, Japan somewhat moderated its stance during the years 1919 to 1930. Japan couldn't acquire any new region. It came out with a new external policy with America and the European nations. Japan was unable to avoid the impact of the Great Depression. Shinto, a military outfit in Japan, took advantage of the international crisis and converted the national policy into an aggressive one. Japanese Militarism and Manchuria The political and economic interests of Japan were rooted quite deep in Manchuria. The Japanese industries derived strength from the mineral-rich Manchuria. Obviously, Japan wanted a total control of Manchuria to satisfy the demands of the increasing population and the growing industries. However, China was against Japanese interference in Manchuria. But Japan brought Manchuria under its command in 1932, despite a strong opposition from China. The League of Nations couldn't take any action against Japan, in spite of China having made an appeal to this international organization. To make the matters worse, the big nations like England, and France too didn't pay any serious attention to the Chinese concerns. In the meantime, Japan had resigned and came out from the League of Nations. The leader of the Kwantung military organization attacked Manchuria without heeding the Japanese government. Thus, the Japanese invasion of Manchuria motivated militarism. The Nationalist Philosophy of the Japanese Military The period between the two world wars witnessed the rise of the military philosophy in the world. Obviously, Japan too came under the impact of dictatorship. By this time, there had come into existence 
communist dictatorship in Russia, fascism in Italy, and Nazism in Germany. These despotic rules were founded on their own ideological basis. The leaders in Japan were followers of these governments. With the help of the Japanese customs and traditions, a new nationalist philosophy was created in Japan. The people of Japan had sympathy for the military, which had been quite successful. The reputation of the military became favorable for building up this new philosophy. The slogan, Powerful Military for Prosperous Nation, was getting acceptance. Kitha, Yiki, Gonda Saiko and Okawa Shumai were the chief originators of this philosophy. All of them had adopted military imperialism and extreme nationalism. A new social phase was attributed to the nationalist philosophy. The reasons for the military dictatorship in Japan can be given as follows. The 1867 Meiji Revolution The modernization of the Japanese military The battle between China and Japan from 1894 to 95 The friendship agreement between England and Japan The battle between Russia and Japan from 1904 to 05 The growing Japanese interference in Korea The First World War and Japan, the Paris Treaty and Japan, the corrupt politics of Zaibatsu, the declining political standards, failure of the political parties, the conflict between the political parties and the military, the Manchurian crisis, the agreements with the communist Russia and Germany, the battle between China and Japan, the inefficiency of the League of Nations. The climax of Japanese militarism was its entry into the Second World War. Hitler's attack on Poland triggered off the Second World War. In the initial stages of the war, Japan had been neutral. America was hurt by Japanese invasion of China since American interests were in danger. Japan had forced its army into the Indo-China region in 1941. As a consequence, America imposed economic sanctions against Japan, which made Japan agree for negotiations. On 18th October 1941, the reins of Japan came into the hands of General Tojo. Japan couldn't put up with the economic sanctions imposed by America. Out of frustration, Japan laid an air attack on Pearl Harbor, the naval center of America, on 7th December 1941. This attack caused a huge loss to America. Due to Japan's entry into the war, the Asian continent was engulfed into the international conflict. Thus, in the conflict between the political parties and the military, the latter was growing more powerful. The political parties were not able to conceive and execute a firm policy to oppose the military ambitions. On the contrary, the military itself had got the assistance of some of highly placed officers in the Japanese administration, which contributed to their strength. With its roots firmly struck in the internal politics, the military enjoyed the seat of power till 1945. Japan also brought about its destruction like the other nations with extreme military nationalism. Reasons for the Second World War The Second World War was not a sudden event and was fought for several reasons. 
the main reasons behind the war were as follows. First, the global economic crisis. After the end of the First World War, both the conquering and the defeated nations had to equally face the financial crisis. Bearing America, almost all the nations in the world witnessed a total collapse of their economies. The main reason behind Second World War was the financial disaster. The economic systems of the world were under tremendous tension. As there had come into being problems like inflation, unemployment, etc. The Versailles Treaty broke the back of the nations already, reeling under the economic crisis. The Great Depression of 1929 made the matters worse. The life of the common people got badly influenced, creating a sense of dissatisfaction among them. Second, Dictatorship of Hitler in Germany The Nazi party came into power in Germany for the same reasons of financial decline and disorderly conditions which had brought about the political change in Italy. There were great similarities in terms of ideologies and functions between the fascist and Nazi parties of the Europe. National Socialist Party was the full name of Nazi Party. The initial letters of this group of words formed the word Nazi. It was Adolf Hitler who pioneered the cause of Nazism. Second reason, the rise of military dictatorship. After the First World War, a number of nations installed the democratic governments. The people who had never witnessed a democratic government felt it like a crisis. Although the nations like Italy, Germany, Poland, Austria, Yugoslavia had democratic governments, they were weak. The people in these nations were fed up with the democratic experiment because of various political parties, frequent defections, changing ministries, corruption, declining economies and burning questions and issues. There was a feeling among the people that the dictators were better than these democratic rules. As a consequence, there rose in the European nations despots like Mussolini and Hitler. They had the opinion that the contemporary issues and questions could only be solved through military means. This incited military dictatorship, causing the international conflict. Third reason, the peace treaty and regional reformation. The winning nations brought in a lot of regional change in the European continent through the Paris Peace Treaty. The pride of Germany was hurt because of the humiliating conditions imposed on it. Italy had the feeling of having deceived by the conquering nations as assurances given to Italy were not fulfilled. Japan was also disappointed being given inferior treatment in Paris. As a result of these developments arose the growth of aggressive nationalism. Fourth reason, the failure of the League of Nations. The League of Nations was set up with the intention of maintaining global peace through a sense of collective responsibility. However, there was no implementation of the resolution of collective security by the League. It couldn't curb the growing military nationalism. Thus, the hostile nations paid no attention to the decisions of the League of Nations. The weaker nations fell a victim to the aggressive nations. The adamant nations like Italy, Germany and Japan 
made the condition of the league quite helpless. As these nations couldn't be tackled, the Second World War became unavoidable. Fifth reason, extreme nationalism and pursuit of weapons. The nationalist Europe gave rise to a feeling that if a nation was humiliated, it was everyone's insult and it must be retaliated by sacrificing life. This began a stream of activities, bringing about secret agreements, false propaganda, rejecting resolutions, etc. Every nation was afraid of one another. The growing intensity of fear made these nations increase their military strength. There began a cutthroat competition of forging innovative weapons. In cooperation with the scientists and researchers, more and more destructive weapons were invented. In other words, Europe had become a den of arms and ammunition before the Second World War. The Progress of the War England and France declared a war against Germany, which attacked Poland in 1st September 1939. This started the Second World War in the European continent. Yeah. America had been assisting the Allies by keeping neutral. America was forced into the war after its naval base at Pearl Harbor was attacked by Japan on 7th December 1941. Afterwards, France and England declared a war on Japan. In this manner, the war was not restricted to the periphery of Europe, but it had brought the entire world into its jaws. The war which lasted six years was fought on land, sea and in air. The Second World War and the World The Second World War began with Hitler's attack on Poland on 1st September 1939. In the first two years of the war, Hitler threatened the nations like England by conquering several nations at a lightning speed. Russia too was forced into the war by the German attack in June 1941. One side of the war was made of nations like Germany, Austria, Hungary, Italy and Japan, and the other side consisted in France, England, and Russia. America is said to have been assisting France in the initial stage of the war. However, due to Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, America was also dragged into the war. The American entry in the battlefield was a turning point in the Second World War. The group of nations led by Germany began to lose ground and on 30th April 1945 the societal death of Hitler was an acceptance of defeat of Germany and its allies. However, the American Air Force destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the two cities in Japan, in 1945. Japan had to surrender and the war that lasted six years came to an end. Hitler in Power Adolf Hitler increased the popularity of the Nazi party by giving assurances, ensuring the property of the middle class people, saving the educated and capitalists from the clutches of communism, jobs for the jobless and Enhancement of the nation through patriotism. The Nazi party won several seats in German parliament in the March 1933 elections. Hitler wanted total power. Within few months, elections were announced and Hitler having put down all the opponents grabbed a huge majority. On the basis of this majority, 
Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany in 1933. In the following year, Hitler assumed the posts of Prime Minister and President of Germany. He set up a centralized government by dissolving the federal status of Germany. Thus, Adolf Hitler became the dictator of Germany. Hitler's Internal Policy Right from the day of grabbing power, Hitler had decided to convert Germany into a Nazi nation. He got rid of his opponents by using his spies. The academic curriculum in Germany was deprived of writings of communism, socialism and fascism. There began at all levels of education a systematic edification in Adolf Hitler and Nazism. The press was made to admire Nazism and Adolf Hitler. Hitler's orders were considered to be compulsory. The Nazi party had the loyal members of Hitler. Strikes and lockouts were declared illegal. The owners of the industries were not allowed to shut down. The Nazi government would have the final decision in the disputes between the workers and the owners. In 1934, Hitler introduced fourth annual plan. Modern technology improved seeds and use of chemical fertilizer increased in agriculture. Hitler youth was encouraged for agriculture. Hitler gained success in producing artificial fiber, rubber and petrol by using chemicals on coal and wood. Lacks of Jews were killed. Hitler adopted several economic reforms. Agricultural production was increased. The scientific and industrial research were given a stimulus. The external policy of Hitler after reforming Germany internally, Hitler began to play an aggressive role in the European politics. His aim was to acquire Germany an important place in the world politics. According to Hitler, the Versailles Treaty was only a scrap roll of paper and hence it was unacceptable. Setting aside the resolutions of the treaty, Hitler made military education compulsory in Germany. The strength of the army and navy was increased and the air force was built. He manufactured advanced arms and ammunition. In order to carry on the aggressive military program, Hitler quit the League of Nations in 1934. There was increased domination of the Nazi party in the Saar province and it was annexed by Germany. The German forces entered into the civilian region near the Rhine River and it was captured by Germany. In order to strengthen the anti-communist forces in the European continent, Hitler brought out an agreement with Italy and Japan in 1937. This was called the Berlin-Rome-Tokyo Agreement. Hitler motivated extreme nationalism and militarism by using this trinational agreement. The consequences of the First World War was the seed for the Second World War. Nazism of Adolf Hitler Hitler was born in a middle class family in the year 1889. He couldn't get education since his parents died untimely. He did the job of painting houses when the First World War broke out. Later on, he was enrolled in the German military. He was honored for his bravery at the battlefield. After the war was over, he lost the job of soldier. He collected like-minded persons to form the National Socialist Allies, Nazi Party, in 1920. 
the ideology of Adolf Hitler was identified as Nazism. Adolf Hitler published Main Camp, that is, My Fight, an autobiography which propagated his political philosophy. Hitler was extremely angry with the Weimar Republic. He criticized the Weimar Republic as anti-German for having signed the humiliating Versailles Treaty. Such a collaborative government couldn't realize the welfare of the German people. Hitler reiterated. He believed in extreme nationalism. His ambition was to make Germany the strongest of all the nations in the world. He taught the German citizens a lesson of sacrifice for the sake of their nation. It was his faith that the Germans were of Aryan race and they were born to rule the people belonging to other inferior races. There were Jew people too in Germany. Hitler began to spread a theory that Germany had to face defeat in the First World War due to the Jewish people and their treachery, since he believed that Jews were a non-Aryan race. He was bent upon driving the Jewish people from Germany. He came out with an announcement that Germany must show its military power to the world. The communist people in Germany deserved death, since they were traitors. Hitler knew that a war woke up the potential power in people. Hence, his theory of one nation, one voice, one leader, and one flag. He believed himself to be a leader as great as Mussolini. To him, Germany was a god, made nation. He was divinely appointed leader of the nation and it was divine order that Germany should rule the world. Thus, the minds of the Germans were ignited by Hitler. Obviously, the much tormented people in Germany looked up to Hitler as a liberator. Rise of Nazism in Germany After the German Emperor gave up the throne in the wake of the First World War, a republic government was formed in November 1918 in Germany. As the constitution of this new government was formed in Weimar, it was declared as Weimar Republic. Weimar constitution was the first written constitution of Germany. This constitution conferred upon the equal voting rights to both men and women and also gave the right to suggest the clauses and to recall the representatives. It was the Weimar Republic which agreed to disregard the Versailles Treaty. As a consequence, the common people in Germany and the armed forces were irritated at the Weimar government. This government failed to improve the declining conditions in Germany, which were caused because of the war and the Versailles Treaty. To make the matters worse, the conditions in Germany went from bad to worse. The common Germans were trodden under the burden of taxes. There was not a single political party in Germany which could take the nation out the doldrums. The Great Depression started in 1929, destroyed German economy which was already under decline. Industrial and commercial activities came to a standstill. Banks ran out of funds, drowning deposits and causing price rise. In short, the life of the common people had become difficult. The Weimar government couldn't overcome the crisis. An ambitious Adolf Hitler took full advantage of this national situation in Germany. He appealed to German masses by means of the Nazi party. For getting the people's support, Hitler undertook 
propaganda of the extreme political philosophy by giving provocative speeches all over Germany. Kemal Pasha from 1881 to 1938 Mustafa Kemal Pasha was born in 1881 in the family of a wood seller. Having sought education at military school, Kemal Pasha became a soldier. He went on to become the commander of the armed forces, as he possessed leadership qualities. Kemal Pasha was a thinker of a modern philosophy. He had the opinion that Turkey should not participate in the First World War. However, Sultan turned a deaf ear and took the side of Germany in the war. The war witnessed the defeat of Turkey. In the year 1920, the Allied Nations made an agreement with Turkey at Sivir's. Kemal Pasha insisted Sultan Majid upon rejecting this agreement, but the Sultan was too timid to say no to the conquerors. Pasha decided to mobilize the Turkey soldiers for retaliation. The people of Turkey too supported Pasha's decision. Kemal Pasha drove the forces of the Allied Nations by virtue of his war strategy. In 1923, a new treaty was signed with Kemal Pasha by the Allied Nations. Before this event, Kemal Pasha had set up a new republic in Ankara by rising the revolt against the Sultan and he became the chief of the nation. Reformations done by Kemal Pasha Before Kemal Pasha's reign, Turkey was known as an Islamic nation. The Sultan had kept under his command the religious and political powers. When Kemal Pasha got power, he declared Turkey a secular nation. He began reforming the conservative and superstitious people of the nation with their dress code. He implemented modern dress code, registration of marriages, Sunday instead of Friday to be the holiday and gave permission to women for education and jobs. The field of education was freed from the domination of religion and there he brought modern education by virtue of various branches of science. He followed the Western judicial system in Turkey. The judges were appointed on merit. As Turkey was an agricultural nation, efforts were undertaken for the improvement in this field. Farmers were counseled at various agricultural colleges. They were given seeds and fertilizers by the government. Thus, Turkey became independent in terms of food grains. The political instability of Turkey was removed by Kemal Pasha by establishing People's Party. He saw an all-round development of the nation by involving appropriate persons in the governance and administration. He adopted a new foreign policy which consisted in non-interference in the affairs of the European nations, non-alignment and no involvement in armed conflicts. By dint of his policies, Turkey came forward as a modern nation. He was named as Ataturk, the father of the people of Turkey. Because of the reformations he brought in, Kemal Pasha was the founder of modern Turkey. He died at the age of 58 in November 1938. The Effects of the Second World War In comparison with the First World War, the Second World War was fought on broader level. The war witnessed a large-scale use of lethal weapons like atom bombs and modern weapons, creating an adverse impact on the overall life of human beings. 
the thoughtless use of arms and ammunition caused long-term effects. Following is the list of effects caused by the Second World War. First, the great loss of life and property. The Second World War is said to have caused greater damage than what the First World War had done. During the six years of the war, one and a half crore soldiers were killed at the battlefield. There was a big number of people who died or became injured and handicapped elsewhere. The war expenditure of all the nations went up to 1517 billion dollars. There was a great loss of public property. The war destroyed buildings, houses, agriculture, hospitals, industries and dams which caused an irreparable loss. Second, the financial effect. The economy of all the nations was damaged due to the great loss of life and wealth. The life of the common people was filled with troubles. Due to inflation, price rise, shortage, widespread diseases, drought, black marketing and other adversities, the people were harassed. There was seen a huge scarcity of food, clothes, medicines, coal and fuel. The condition of the common people was pitiable. Third, the moral degradation of man. Due to the terrorizing incidents during the war period, people's attitude towards life was entirely changed. There was a great shift in the attitude towards God, religion and women. The issues of widows and orphans became critical. The bread earners of innumerable families died in the war. People at distant places would not get affected by the wars. However, the pangs of the Second World War were felt by the people far away from the actual places of fighting. The use of atom bombs caused an unforeseen human destruction. There began a spate of violence and atrocities all over the world. This moral degradation of man was going to be very destructive in the time to come. Third, Dictatorship in Turkey The democratic dictatorship set up in Turkey by Kemal Pasha in the year 1923 and was different from the despotic rules by Mussolini and Hitler. After becoming the first president, he declared elections after every four year. Kemal Pasha didn't adopt a societal policy which was endeared by Hitler and Mussolini. He utilized his dictatorship for the benefit of modernization of his country. A new era rose in Turkey due to the reformative rule of Kemal Pasha. Fourth effect, the decline of imperialism. The empires of Germany, Italy and Japan were brought down because of the defeat in the Second World War. The imperial foundation of the winning nations too got weakened. Nevertheless, England and France tried their best to maintain their empires after the war was over. But these nations had lost a lot despite their victory. The two nations were not able to solve the problems of the people in their colonies. So, India, Sri Lanka and Indonesia, in Asia and Egypt, Sudan, Libya in Africa got independence. Fifth, the onset of Cold War between America and Russia. After the Second World War, America couldn't afford to be as non-aligned as it had been before. America 
before the Second World War, used to dabble in the affairs of Europe. However, in the post-Second World War period, America underwent a political change. As England and France gave up, America had to look after the welfare of the democracies in the European nations. The American participation in the world politics became compulsory, as Russia was emerging as the other powerful nation. While withdrawing from the Second World War, Russia had initiated several nations into communism. America had to take stance at the world level, since Russia had plans of forming a group of communist nations. Thus, there began a cold war between the group of communist nations led by Russia and the democratic nations led by America. Sixth, the formation of United Nations Organization on 24th October 1945. The world came to realize how a war is destructive by seeing the great loss caused by the Second World War. It also meant that the way of resolving an international problem was not war, but coordination. The nations had an understanding that if another war broke out, nobody would left to taste the fruit of victory. There was a universal awareness that war would destroy the entire humanity. Hence, with the aims of resolving international issues through peaceful negotiations, establishing cooperation and coexistence, and maintaining global peace, a league-like international organization was set upon 24th October 1945. It was named United Nations Organization, UNO. Remember this. Mussolini was the son of an blacksmith in Italy. He founded the fascist party in 1919. Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazis, used to paint houses during the First World War. Kemal Pasha was born in a family of wood seller in Turkestan. His was a reformative dictatorship. The emperor, the general, the political parties, the military, the administration and Zaibutsu were the centers of power in Japan. On 1st September 1939, Hitler attacked Poland and the Second World War began.